person. Like, say, for example, if your parents were divorced and, and my brother wanted to marry you, I would ask, does she keep a connection with both parents? What impact did it have? Is she okay? As long as she's okay, it's all right. But when someone's been massively traumatized and hasn't healed from that trauma, their marriage is going to be difficult. The, it is going to trickle into their marriage. From that perspective, I can understand. But from a judgmental mm -hmm. perspective, oh, she's a single mom, that, that is just cultural yeah. and it's, it, it's embarrassing and there's no positive consequences from that. I but agree. I do think when you do come from uh, some kind of trauma, it doesn't have to be broken home, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. I think a logical question to ask before engaging in a relationship is how did that trauma impact your view of love and relationships? Is that a heavy question to ask before Who getting cares? into a relationship? Who cares? What are you supposed to be asking before getting into it? Like, what are the things like finances, maybe like I don't, there's so many books written on it. Yeah. Islamic and uh, like even from some, yeah. I think there's like one 100 questions you should ask before marrying someone. Yeah. Okay. What from your perspective for a successful marriage or relationship, what mm. are some things we should be asking? What did you find most difficult about being raised and how has that impacted your view of love and relationships? And do you find people actually know the answer to that? No. And that's why they, you're asking, you know, I'm like, I don't even know what yeah, I would And then say. if they say something like my parents used to fight a lot about money, OK, then it might have created a wound in you. So when when money is tough, you might run away from the relationship. Or if you might say that they were physically abusive with each other, OK, that might mean that that's how you resolve conflict. If you've learned that, not your fault, but uh, something you do need to heal from. Or if they said they were really loving and kind to each other and they just made it work. Nice. Wow. Yeah, I think that's probably a really underrated question because we talk so much about what are your career goals, what are your aspirations, mm -hmm. and so many CEOs have the best first dates because they can tell you all the things that they're planning to do, but they don't tell you that overworking is a, a coping mechanism. They're actually working so much because they had abandonment issues at home and, you know, their mum and dad broke up and they had to support their mum from the age of 16 and now they don't have any emotional regulation. It could be, I mean, that's yeah. a bit deep, but, uh, <laughs> but it could happen, you know, like, uh, yeah, obviously when you see a CEO and you think, wow, amazing, but you also should think, why are you addicted to work? What, yeah. what was the suffering that so, caused So, I mean, you? what do you do? So I, I'm on a date with the CEO. I can tell issues are there. Yeah. Do I just like walk away or am I like, okay, let's see, maybe well, like. Well, here's the thing. Everybody has issues. That's the thing. Everybody has issues, but you want to know how much of a handle they have over their traumas. If, if you meet somebody who is completely aware that they, they have these problems and they need somebody who adapts to that. Say, for example, a CEO recognizes that I'm not the most emotionally present person. Mm -hmm. And how I deal with that is I give my wife lots of gifts and presents, hoping she knows that that's my form of investment and hoping she understands that's my love language. That's my way of saying I love you. I might not say it verbally, but I need someone who understands my methods. If he speaks like that and he meets a girl that understands that, no worries whatsoever. But if it's a complete, somebody is like, I've got no issues. I'm great. I'm perfect. I'm this. There's no point. So love languages aren't 